happy Wednesday. Welcome to the morning after. I am your host, Charlene Joint, and today we are recapping episode five already of season 16 of The Bachelorette. I cannot believe it's episode five somehow. It feels like we're almost halfway through the season and we have a new Bachelorette. You guys know by now that I start off every morning after with a moment that delivered and this is brought to you by Skip the Dishes, which delivers delicious food to your door. My moment that delivered this week is a good one. It's a feel good moment. It was when Taisha canceled that rose ceremony and when she made that group, the losing group date team, not miss out on the cocktail party. And I know Taisha is probably just the messenger in this scenario, but nonetheless, what this showed was just compassion for the guys, both on her part and production's part. And it just felt like maybe they did feel as bad for the men as we all have been feeling. And there was no need for them to fret about going home or fret about missing out on time with her unnecessarily or just because that's the way things have always been. So this was just a feel good moment for me where I felt like the men were finally being given a tiny bit of a break. So that was my moment that delivered and you guys know that if you're craving something spicy to go with your bachelorette drama, you can get it delivered to your door via the Skip app. So I liked this episode. It was a feel good episode. There was just a lot of new things going on. We start off with Taisha's night one and I already really, really like Taisha in this role. She just has this sort of like effervescence and she has this giggle and she's all smiles. You just get this like sense of new fresh energy being breathed into the room and you can get it from the guys it just felt like they all lit up when they saw her i felt like i needed that jolt at this point in this season which has been a little trying so far so yeah so far i love taisha in this role big time we see four new guys arrive uh, out of the limos i mean it's not super surprising they did this I think it's fair, but uh, it would seem that we got our new villain with it, who is Spencer, who seems to be playing that role kind of maybe accidentally. I'm not really sure yet. Then before we go on with Taisha's season, we have a catch up with Claire and Dale with Chris Harrison. <sighs> this segment really just like stopped the momentum for me. I was so excited to see the group date happen and see Taisha get to talk to her men and suddenly it was like back to Claire and Dale. I think that in general, the show is overestimating how much we care whether or not Claire and Dale actually spoke before the season began. I don't know about you, but I don't really think it matters. I don't care if they lied to Bachelor Nation, if they actually did speak. I believe them when they say they didn't. This whole thing just sort of felt like, okay, but they're happy, so what does it really matter, honestly? Okay, so finally we're back to Tasha's first group date of the season, and we have a game of pool basketball. I was really impressed with some of these guys' uh, basketball throws. Like, I'm maybe just not that great with a basketball, but holy, holy crap, I was really impressed. And I really liked, too, that sense of, like, renewed energy. It really felt like the guys really want that time with her. And not just because it's, you know, oh, it's my time. Like, I, I, this is what you do on The Bachelorette. It, I really feel like the guys are all really interested in her romantically and because I haven't had that feeling on Claire's season and not it doesn't always happen with every bachelorette and so it's just refreshing it kind of feels like old school that way where all the men are genuinely like you know they're all they all sort of have hearts in their eyes for her it's also exciting to see which guys whom we've gotten to know are finally getting some of that one-on-one -on -one airtime shown a good example is Kenny we finally got some of his conversation in night one where he talked about what he actually does something to be about that boy band manager occupation and Zach C is becoming a front runner and this is someone who we hardly ever saw anything from so it's just sort of like because you feel invested in these guys at this point, like I feel like I know them. I don't know, it's really more exciting to watch guys that you feel like you know in this situation. So Easy gets the group date rose, and again, it's the same kind of thing. Like Easy has been a voice of reason, he's been uh, some comic relief over the last few weeks. So 
whether or not he has a real future with Taisha, I'm just like, yes, give him that group date rose. Like, easy needs a reward. Yeah, I don't know. This whole group date just left me smiling. I think I just really needed that relief, and this group date definitely brought it. Okay, so now Jason leaves. This definitely looked a little edited out of order. It would seem that Jason left after Taisha's date with Brendan, but it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The only thing really worth mentioning about Jason's leaving is the fact that he was the only guy who had had a one-on-one -on -one date with Claire. And this is proof that a one-on-one -on -one date really does have that emotional impact on someone. I challenge anyone to go into this show and have a one-on-one -on -one date with their lead and not leave with, you know, with legitimate feelings for their lead. I felt it after my first one-on-one, -on -one. everyone feels it. The entire situation is just built up for you to fall and to build up that emotional attachment as fast as possible. And this was proof of it. I believe that Jason left for the reasons that he claimed to leave for, and I believe that it would happen to him specifically because of his one-on-one -on -one date. And finally, Brendan gets his one-on-one -on -one date. Again, Brendan, another guy that we've sort of seen in the background, and we finally see him coming to the surface here and getting his time to shine. Nothing not to like about Brendan. I did laugh a bit at the Chris Harrison cameos throughout the state. I did have to wonder if he's getting some sort of a raise this season for all the cameos he's making. It just seemed like he's doing a bit more than usual. But it, you know, I found this amusing. It was a nice touch, especially considering the lack of, you know, scenic changes and how everything is more or less in the same place. I really like the chemistry between Brendan and Tasha. There's a sort of softness to Brendan that at first you might mistake for something else, but then when you hear him speak a bit, you realize that he just really, he's not like in your face as a personality and I find that very endearing. He's very intriguing and I can see his appeal for sure. Loved the divorce conversation in the evening. I really feel like this will resonate with a lot of people and it just felt like such a substantial conversation to be having this early in a season and not just one-sided where one person is telling the other person I went through this thing for them to bond over it. It was the perfect cap to the start where we do get Tasha, she's all bubbly and full of energy but then you have a conversation of that weight within that same episode. It just secured her. <laughs> in my books as being a great bachelorette and for this to maybe be a great season to come. As you can see, I enjoyed this episode, I'm in a good mood, and it was refreshing. I feel like I needed this, especially at the halfway mark. Thank you guys for tuning in to the morning after. Be sure to read my flare recap and my All the Pretty Pandas recap, which will come out later this week, and I'll see you guys here next week on the morning after. Bye!